Fear stops us from achieving our true greatness. Are you a professional woman who is feeling stuck, unmotivated, or burned out? Are you worried about your wellness? Are you letting fear stop you from crushing your goals? If you answered yes to any or all of these, then this is the podcast for you. Dr. Charmaine Gregory, Night Shift Emergency Physician, Burnout Thriver, and Wellness Champion, along with everyday heroes just like you, will explore how to face fear in our lives and emerge victoriously. Dr. Gregory here. Did you know that I'm on YouTube as well? You can find me at Charmaine Gregory MD. See you there. Here. Hello, 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 Fearless Freedom Tribe. It's Dr. G coming to you from Guam. I guess I don't say that enough. Guam is my new home. You guys know this. Um, and if you're just tuning in for the first time, obviously you wouldn't know that. So welcome to the podcast. So glad you found us. We love talking about facing fear on this podcast. And we love to talk about how we can do that and emerge victoriously. So one humongous fear or one humongous like fearless move, I guess, that happened in 2021 for myself and my family is that we moved from Michigan all the way 7,000 plus miles away to Guam. And that is now where we reside. And um, details of, of, of the move are listed or not listed, but chronicled, narrated, I guess, or told. <laughs> <laughs> in previous episodes, but this episode is going to be one of several episodes to cover the questions that you have asked. I am just so encouraged and so excited that you have so many amazing questions. And so I am going to start answering questions. Now, these questions came from Instagram. And so what I will do is I will say the tag of the individual who asked the question, okay? And I think that I should be able to get through three questions today. And before I do that, I feel like I have to do something. And I know that you're listening. If you're listening, you're not going to be able to see what I'm doing, but that's okay. I'm going to do my best to try to describe it. So the first thing is I want to give a shout out to another physician entrepreneur, and that is SDR Custom Creations, okay? So SDR Custom Creations is the bomb doctor who also has, a, she basically makes crafts, okay? So she makes these amazing tumblers that are custom and she also makes t-shirts. So I wanted to share the t-shirt that she sent me that I purchased. I loved it because it was awesome. I love getting packages, hint, hint, hint. Um, anyway, so Here's the t-shirt. It's all black background. It has white letters. The first word says vaccines. The next word says cause. And the third word says adults. So <laughs> I just wanted to share that. I love this shirt. It's awesome. You know, I'm a big t-shirt wearer and you know that I absolutely love wearing my Star Wars t-shirts and I like wearing fearless t-shirts like from the podcast. And I also like wearing shirts related to my tech company and the products that we have, products and services that we have. So I'm a t-shirt girl. What can I say? That must be why I feel right at home here in Guam because I can wear a t-shirt and uh, all year round. <laughs> Pretty awesome. Now, if you can also see, uh, or I'll describe again, because obviously I know that a majority of you are listening. Um, there is a lot of water outside. It is raining. It has been raining all night. Apparently it rained so much last night while I was at work that the water came up through the floor in our bathroom. But interestingly enough, the bathroom is built such that there is a a grade in the bathroom. So it runs off. If any water does come in, it's, it runs right back through the drainage system. So I thought that was genius. Uh, clearly you can't have carpet in your bathroom. Why would you anyway? And clearly you also can't have wood in your bathroom. Ah, wait a minute. They don't build with timber here. It's strictly tile and concrete. 
So there's that. Oh, that was a fun fact that Sherry didn't even realize it. Okay. And then the other thing that I think is super fun. Let me see if I can do it now. So I have these cool glasses that I got when I went to Houston. One of my Uber drivers had amazing little marketing uh, deal that he was doing. And he gave me these glasses. The glasses have uh, horizontal lines on them and they also light up. So let me see. I'm probably going to go real dark here. Uh oh, it's like a party disco. Dr. G is partying and it's dark now and the the glasses are lighting up. It's kind of like we're at a party. So I hope you're feeling the vibe right along with me because, you know, this right here that you're getting from me is what you get after I've worked a night shift and I've had a bunch of meetings and now I'm recording the podcast. All right. Just full disclosure thought you should know. Okay, so let's get to the questions because that is the purpose of this particular show. I wanted to get back and basically answer these questions. Okay, so the first one comes from Dr. Modern Mom, and her question is, how are the kids adjusting? Now, our children are very, very, very easily... um, maybe let's see, choice of words here. They uh, are very adaptable. Is that even a thing? I don't want to say malleable because it's not that they're, you can like shape them to do things, but they, they're very resilient. They're very, um, they basically are able to adapt easily. There we go. They easily adapt to situations and figure out how to make the situation awesome. Right. And so that's all they know. That's all they're, you know, that's, that's all they've done their entire lives. And so, you know, making the transition really didn't affect them in a negative way. It actually had a lot of very positive effect. Now they have gained a lot of freedom by living here. They're able to go off on their own and go to the walk to the corner store and get items for themselves. They can go around the corner and go play basketball, their friends, their friends houses. Um, They can go to the mall, they go they get dropped off at the mall and they get to hang out there with their friends. So they actually have more freedom here than they did when we were in Michigan. And so they really, really, really love that. And then the other thing is that they have access to the outdoors all the time. So we got here in February and right away they were able to go outside and play every day. They, you know, they could go on the porch, they can go to the backyard. Now we have a, my mom put up a, um, a net. And so it's like a volleyball badminton net. And so they play volleyball with each other. They play badminton. They are, uh, we have a basketball court in the front yard, right in front of the garage, and they play basketball all the time. So they've adjusted just fine. (laughs) So it's been really neat to see because they really have just like slid right into the culture. Like they're like, okay, no problem. And then there are, you know, there are, youth their age around and that we interact with that they're, you know, and then now um, we just joined a church. And so now there's even a a broader exposure as far as, you know, um, connections to be made. And so, and then they're going to be, this is a part that I'm I'm, I'm thinking is probably going to require the most adjustment is that they have been homeschooled their entire lives and they've never been to like brick and mortar school. And so they are signed up to go to school for the first time, actually on the ninth. So on the ninth, they're going to be doing their first day of school. So that's, that might be a whole other episode. I don't know. I'm not sure what's going to happen there, but they are very excited about that transition. They are actually maybe a little bit more nervous about that transition than moving 7,000 miles, if you can believe that, but it kind of seems that way. So they're excited and they're nervous because, again, they have no reference point for what school is, right? So they only have what they've seen on television. And you know that's very skewed. So who knows what is going to happen there? I'm hoping 
that they will listen to all the things that we have taught them <laughs> and they will not embarrass our family. <laughs> I don't think they will. I think they will be just fine. But uh, they are adjusting absolutely fantastic in fantastic fashion. So uh, that is to answer your question, Dr. Modern Mom. Thank you so much for asking how the cherubs are adjusting. All right, next one. Dr. Well, so your, her tag is Sarah Ashete. Uh, MD. Okay. On, on Instagram. Um, so Dr. Sarah, she asks why Guam? Okay. So that is a really long answer. <laughs> I'm going to try to make it as succinct as possible. Hey, it's Dr. G. And I just wanted to take a quick moment to thank you for listening to this episode. I'm so honored to have you here with me. Did you know that I can help you to get your own podcast started? With my podcasting launch course for professionals, I walk you through everything you need to know about starting a podcast. I'm with you every step of the way from sign up to launching your show with five episodes ready to go. There's a done for you version that's also available if you would just rather just do recordings and leave the behind the scenes work up to us, then that one is definitely for you. But either way, we've got your back here at Fearless Freedom with Dr. G. Oh, if you already have a show and you need production services, we have monthly plans available for you. So check out the links in the episode show notes for more information. Let's get back to the show. Why Guam? So we are a family that loves to travel. We travel, you know, last year was a bummer for us because we were able to get in two trips before everything shut down, but we usually do a lot more trips than that over the course of the year. So we were kind of having a lot of cabin fever, but that's not the reason why we moved to Guam, but you know, we just love to travel. And we had said so many years ago that at some point we wanted to live outside of the mainland United States and just experience another part of the world. Like we wanted that for our children so that they would have that and they would essentially be world citizens, right? So we decided this thing. And about 10 years ago, I actually had gotten a position in Australia um, as a consultant and a consultant is an attending physician in, um, in Australia. And so I'd gotten a position as a consultant and was all fired up to go. Uh, at that time, we had one child and um, my mom was still working. And so she said, no, I'm not, I'm not leaving. I'm not, um, I'm not ready to make that kind of move. And so you'd be on your own essentially. And so, uh, you know, that was not going to work. <laughs> so, so that got thwarted. So, you know, kind of fast forward, you know, always in the back of our minds, always wanting to do this thing. The kids are, you know, the cherubs are getting older and older. Um, to the point now where we actually have one teenager you know, 11 year old and a nine year old. And so we basically were, you know, um, still want to do it, but it was still kind of on a back burner. And so 2020 happened and my husband realized that he could literally run his business from anywhere. Cause he was doing it from, you know, the house <laughs> for almost a year. And so that kind of, you know, reinforced it that we could do it, like we could be anywhere. And so then I started looking, where could I go, where I could just transition um, essentially my credentials in emergency medicine and get employment, you know, or find, find work. And if it's not, you know, like a employed position, I guess, versus like contractor situation. Um, so that basically gave us a handful of choices. So we had the U.S. Virgin Islands as an option. Then there was New Zealand, Australia, Guam. And New Zealand would have been awesome because we have family in Christchurch, and that would have been amazing to live near to family. But 
we had a little bit of a hiccup because we were moving or we did move, I should say, with our parents. So our moms are coming with us. They came with us. And with New Zealand, you have to have a certain, there were certain stipulations that, that went along with a grandparent visa that we were unable to meet or they were unable to meet. And so, cause it had to be their assets that were a certain amount. And so that was out of the question. Then Australia was basically, you know, like no only immediate family for the person coming. And so we're, we're going on my employment status, not my husband's, you know, so it just wouldn't work out. So it wasn't, Australia was out, New Zealand was out. And then the Virgin Islands would have been fine, only they don't compensate very well. And so that basically took it off my list. And so then Guam was kind of like not on the, you know, not in the forefront, but it was something that was mentioned in passing and started asking around about it. And everybody that I spoke to had nothing but positive to say about it, about the island, about the people, about the practice. And so I just said, you know what? I think this is ready to go. And then the rest is history. So we've made the decision in October and I got my job literally like I made a decision. I made some connections. I had an interview over the phone and then I got the job like that day after the interview. And then we had to basically consolidate, pare down three households get it, get them ready, get all the things ready to be shipped. We had to sell two houses in two different States. We had to sell, um, three cars and I had to get my credentialing, everything done, my license, the whole nine. We had to do all that stuff in order to get us ready to come here in February. And it is some, by some miraculous feat, I still don't remember exactly everything because it was such a blur, but yeah, we did it. And so now we are here. We called our home, our home, our new home. And, um, it has been amazing. So that is why Guam did I need, did I need her next question is, do I need extra, um, extra items to or extra certifications to practice here as a U.S. physician. So no, I did not need to have any extra certification. So I am board certified in emergency medicine. That was sufficient. I getting a Guam license would be like getting a North Carolina license or an Arizona license. Like it, it would be like getting a state license. So that's what I had to do in order to practice. Um, and then of course you have to get credential at the hospital and then you have to make sure you meet the criterion for those for, for the hospital. But yes, no, I did not need any additional certifications to practice here as a U.S. physician. And then the last question that she had is, are the cherubs making friends? Yes, they are. These little guys are like, I mean, guys is, you know, generic. I have two girls and a boy. And these cherubs are such friend magnets. Like they're so congenial and they are, you know, they are so polite that they're able to make friends. So yes, they have made several friends. We have a couple of families that we do things together with. And so they have been um, very excited about that. And I'm sure they're going to be making friends on their new adventure in, on August 9th when they actually go to school. <laughs> oh my, <laughs> I think I'm more nervous about it than they are. Um, they're just kind of like, oh my gosh, I can't believe they're actually going to go to school. It's nuts. So I will let you know if they have any more friends that they make. I'm sure they'll make a ton more friends once they start school uh, and they start interacting with more, more cherubs their age. Okay, cool. All right. Thank you, Dr. Ashday, for those questions. Love it. All right. And so the last questions that I'm going to uh, answer are from beta mom. And that is her handle on Instagram, but she is Dr. Joni Yeh. And um, she asks, where do we buy groceries? So we buy groceries pretty much all over the place. So the thing to remember is that this is an island. So if you've ever gone to Hawaii, you can understand why this is. 
There are things that need to be imported to an island that is not produced on an island. So you have a smaller landmass. You don't have all the things. You have to bring everything uh, to the place. So then certain items are going to be more expensive. This is what we call here the paradise tax. <laughs> so, hey, I'm cool with spending like $5 for a thing of milk. If I get sunshine all year round, I have like five minute access to the beach and also the mountains. I think I'm okay with paying $5 for a thing of milk. So we go all over the place. There is a store here that is a subsidiary or in the same family, I guess, as Kroger. And it's called, um, oh no, what is it called? I keep wanting to say Safeway, but Safeway is that California store. It is called Payless. Thank you. <laughs> My brain just kicked in. So it's called Payless. And so Payless is the subsidiary of Kroger that we have here. And then there is a like a big box store that's similar to Costco or um, Sam's, but doesn't require a membership. And it's called Cost You Less. And so we go there for bulk items. Um, and then this is a beautiful thing. All right. So there's no Walmart. There's no um, there is a Kmart. And the Kmart is very busy and it serves a lot of people on the island. Um, but I would say that that's not where the most inexpensive groceries can be found. There are a lot of mom and pop corner stores, which I think is really, really, really cool because, uh, you know, that that concept uh, kind of got uh, crushed in a lot of places when Walmart came in. So there's no Walmart here. So there's a lot of mom and pop stores. So you can go into like these neat little supermarkets and find some really cool items. And I think that's kind of like a neat little adventure to do as well. My daughter is obsessed with corner stores. Like every village we go into, every time we go on the road, she's like, mom, there's a corner store. I want to go inside. And she always goes inside and she always tries to find this candy that she got introduced to, this Japanese candy called Yan Yan. And so she's always looking for Yan Yan in every corner store that we possibly go to. Um, it's kind of fun. That's her thing. So uh, Payless is a supermarket. We go to local supermarkets as well. And then we go to corner stores and we go to um, cost you less. We, um, we get certain items at Home Depot. So like, this is interesting too, because I would never think that I go to Home Depot for things like this. So we get like um, toilet paper and like uh, hand towels and um, laundry detergent at Home Depot, because that's where the best price is located. <laughs> yeah. So you start to learn where to get certain items, the more you're here. Um, and then for fresh produce, we typically don't buy produce at supermarket, we go to the actual market. So every Saturday, um, one of the nearby villages to where we are, has a farmer's market. And so we go there and we can get all of our produce uh, for the week there. Um, we can go to the fish co-op and get fresh catch of the day fish uh, that comes in each day. Uh, there is, we just discovered another fish shop uh, that's close to the house that we're going to check out here soon. And so there are, you know, there are places to get different things depending on what you're looking for. All right. So that's where we buy our groceries. Now, the other question that she had is what is something new that we enjoy buying that wasn't available in the United States? Okay. So my children will say yan yan because <laughs> we never knew about that in the States. <laughs> so they have like all these Japanese candies, uh, Japanese um, snacks that they love. So they like yan yan. And then there's like another one. It's like uh, they're these tall um, pretzel sticks and they have like a dip sauce. And so they love that too. So they would say that. Um, I would say that I love the fact that I can get all of the fruit that I grew up with. So like we have soursop every single week when we go to the market, we get soursop, we have it to eat, like, you know, just as the fruit. And then we also have it in a drink. So we, my mom takes it and makes a drink. And so we're constantly drinking soursop drink. 
Um, we're constantly eating papaya. Papaya is like running wild here. Like literally there's like random papaya trees, like in the bush behind our house. There's random papaya trees, like on the side of the road. It's, it's running wild that and breadfruit and breadfruit is one of our favorites. And so we, we get breadfruit now before we had to go to, we had to get it from New York and you had to do all this. It was like a big ordeal. So now we literally can get breadfruit every weekend or we can go to the farm or we can go to the farmer's market and get breadfruit. Um, so I would say the fruit, I got a chance to try Vietnamese. So the other thing is that there is a, there are so many amazing Asian foods here <laughs> because we're so close to the Pacific Rim. And so basically, you know, you can get authentic Vietnamese, authentic Thai. Matter of fact, we have our favorite Thai restaurant, which is down the street. We literally can walk there and it's somebody's house. And it's a little elderly lady who makes the food. You order it and she's like, okay, I cook now. And then you just go there and she gives you the food. I mean, it's just amazing. Absolutely amazing. Love going there. And of course it's only certain hours because it is her house. So it's like, you have to make this isn't about whether you want to have Thai food before six o'clock or you're not going to get it from her. <laughs> um, but there are, you know, there are Korean restaurants here. There are Japanese, of course. Um, there are Chamorro restaurants. So Chamorros are, Chamorro uh, people are the native people to the island. So there's Chamorro food, which is amazing. It's like, they love barbecue just like Jamaicans do. So they have their barbecue and um, their food is spicy. Love it. And um, yeah, no, it's just so much good food. Like there's so much good food. So when you say that, uh, there's like a long, long list of items that I couldn't get in the States that I'm able to get here. That is like the foodies dream. So um, if you do come to visit Dr. Ye, just, just realize that, you know, we could go take a palate trip, like a palate tour, and you can um, get to enjoy uh, uh, those uh, touches to the palate that will elate it. All right, cool. So that is, I didn't want to make this too long. I just wanted to go through those three um, sets of questions. And I am super excited that you are asking me questions. I'm, I have many more. So I'm going to keep trying to do these episodes where I answer them and um, I welcome more. So I, I might be doing some little shorts in between where I'm just dropping like a TikTok or I'm dropping a, you know, a Instagram uh, a reel answering questions just to kind of make sure that I get to everybody's question because I feel like, you know, I'm just so excited to be able to answer questions, you know? So, um, so thank you for your time. Thank you for listening. And, um, I will chat with you in the near future. This is Dr. G hit me up on all the social channels. If you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, uh, Charmaine Gregory MD or my, um, my, uh, Instagram, or my TikTok even, you should do that. <laughs> you should definitely do that because I want to hear from you. I want to get to know you better. All right. Take care and be strong, be brave and unleash your greatness. Thank you for joining me on this episode of Fearless Freedom with Dr. G. Again, I'm Dr. G. And if you like this episode, be sure to subscribe so that you can get notified of when the next episode is going to be. And also, I'll catch you next time. Have a great one. Be strong, be brave, and unleash your greatness.